today we're doing the podcast without Megan because Megan said she wanted no part of this witchcraft, you know. So instead, I decided, you know what, he would be a good person to torture. My DM Teal, so Teal's here. Um, if you want, guys watch the live streams, you've probably seen him before. He's a guy that, um, what was it, Poutine Shakes, wasn't it? You were very defiant on Garbu. Given right, over muscle. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was the, it. The mare's milk. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mayor's. So... The reason why we're here doing this one is because I got sent a really unusual e- email. So I'll go ahead and I'll read out the email and then we'll get into this book that I've been sent. But it gets weird, okay? So <laughs> it gets really weird. Guys, this is, this is really bizarre. Anyway, so Dear Snackbeardia, I wrote a book of the occult magic for Dungeon Masters, which recently released uh, was recently released by Lamentation of the Flame Princess. It bears the name The Book of Antithes... Fuck, I can never say words this, this yeah this is why I get Megan to do everything <laughs> and the little occult grimoire teaches the principles of game magic including the summoning of demons which you will fucking do by the way guys uh, dice magic and astral travel all which are achievable through the dungeon master games uh, dungeon dragon games uh, I performed a divination and my demons instructed me to contact you to send you a promo copy <laughs> of my book whereby I can introduce you to the true power of the extra power masteries. What is your mailing address, Job or Job Bitman? So that was my introduction <coughs> to. Oh, uh, oh, you're telling me that a demon's got to pay postage? What the fuck? <laughs> no, no, he, yeah, 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 he did, he did. But uh, <laughs> so, so I thought, you know what? Um, I, I've I've said to loads of people before, send the stuff in if you, you know what I mean. If you're working on something, send the stuff in because I know fine lately just how clicky the whole, you know, like Kickstarter can be and all that type of stuff, like self publications, like everyone's sucking each other off and it's just really bad especially with uh, tabletop games it's ridiculous the amount of fucking like see if you're not in the in crowd on uh, on twitter you may as well just forget about it and this book will never get on the in crowd on twitter I can tell you that much but look that's, well, yeah. it, 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 it may get on like big titty goth girlfriend reddit maybe I don't know yeah, what yeah it could do that but look so let's start off with who is this book for and who is it not for so I would argue the first person it's really for is did you live through the satanic panic of d d <laughs> literally like this is like this catered, needs to justify this, this justifies the satanic panic this is <laughs> it's ca- it's catering so hard towards slash X, it's almost painful. You know oh, yeah. I mean? You know the worst thing is, I was talking, if, I'm in a group chat with a few of the boys that do like X story times, like Chase and Django, and there's a few other ones and whatnot. Really- and uh, fuck, I asked them, I was like, yeah, wouldn't you guys be interested in it? And I was showing them some pictures from the book, and they all, all just said, fucking burn that shit. Don't fuck with demons, man. Don't fuck with demons. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all, they're all about, uh, they're very firm believers. So, uh, this scares the ex. <laughs> so before we get into it, though, I want to say, honestly, for my opinions, I, I really like this book, but maybe it's just because I'm an edgy boy. I really, really fucking like this book. I like this more than I should, although it's definitely not for everyone. Uh, Teal, I know you absolutely despise this book. You do not <laughs> like it at all. You are terrified of it, and you don't like even having a copy of it on your computer. What would you say? I'm afraid, I'm afraid Jesus won't love me anymore after <laughs> yeah. I read this book. Yeah. Damn, yeah. I've got Cyber demons. She, <laughs> she. Yeah. What would you uh, say? But it's well. Let, but let me get that. Get this straight. It was rel, well resor- researched. Uh, it, it, it's it's detailed, dense at times, but but packed full of information. Mm. Uh, the uh, some of the things uh, he goes into detail about like auguries and and casting dice, and it's like almost like witchcraft one hundred and one. All the questions you never thought you needed answers in it for yeah look i'm just glad that on everything in this book you can tell if it's male or female because there would be a cock and ball <laughs> the male and something leaking if it's female they went through uh, make sure every yeah. <laughs> every damn thing is there yeah and i think uh, i saw both said sometimes you know yeah, there's, there's, there's both both things quite there a few quite a few the worst thing is i can't actually show you guys you know, I can't. Uh, well, I suppose I'll, I'll look. I'll do some edits and I'll see what I can, <laughs> what I can show because it's uh, definitely not safe for work and it definitely would never you, be allowed. You better on. get, 
you, you better get every nipple and every ball sack or your toast. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> fucked. I'm so fucked. But look, I, I love the book. I think it's really interesting. The, my only, only problem with the book is it's written as if it's a literal spell book. And it makes sense because it even refers and like to, to use the book as itself as like a prop and stuff like that and how it works. But if you were just to, if you just were like you know say you're in the middle of the game and you want to just quick reference something, it it isn't the easiest like you know goals is written type shit. You know what I mean? Uh, did you guys notice that on page that on page 40, 41 it says Donald Trump? <laughs> Doesn't it? Right, no, hold on. Let me, uh, so so yeah, 41. there's. Co- <laughs> there's like codes written in this book there's like sigils that are like like if you hold them reverse in a mirror you can read them uh, like there's a lot of detail that went in this book that is 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 out of it's there's, crazy there's, yeah there's, 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 they're trying to do it a, a oh, yeah, example yeah. of the ordinal code and it says the 45th president Donald Trump <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh okay okay so we'll for, we'll break it down so we will um we'll break down how the book works so it's broken up into multiple different chapters part one is all about a cult essentially like how dice and divination work and banishing demons and you know the weird thing is banishing demons and stuff like that it, it almost goes into like yoga in a weird sense like i can see why people say yoga is uh, satanic now I never understood it, but now I do. Um, it and goes, now you must do downward dog to some invisible bub. Yeah, but it ta- it's really interesting. I'll, like, I don't want to talk too much about it. First of all, I couldn't even explain it. But if you're actually interested in occult magic at all, or to even get an understanding of what they're doing, um, and it really, as his tale says, it's like a 101 for occultism, you know? So <laughs> if you, if you if want you that... Want- if you want to seduce that big titty goth girlfriend next door, you know, buy this book and pull out all all the stops. Mm. I, I really <laughs> yes. like those wee uh, passages that he has. Like, you know, it's like I, I was I was torturing Megan's mom with this because she's all into like demons and shit like that, and she's like she's terrified of all that type of stuff. It's like I'm I'm not fucking with no demons. And also, I got the book out. It was sitting like torturing her, chasing her about the living room. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, you, you were chasing her like with, with a book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, me, me and Megan torture her mom. Something shocking. It's bad. Like I mean, it's <laughs> but like it's it's a great pastime, you know. Um, so uh, yes. I noticed your, while your Christian Irish grandmother. <laughs> yeah. While while reading this, speaking about Irish and religious backgrounds, it's like you you read through it and each like almost chapter is like a user agreement. Like you you have to agree to continue yeah. on. Yeah, forward. yeah, it does actually, then, yeah. Well, I it's think like the book itself is by Apple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it is almost like hold on, we'll go back up. Well, you know what? I, I really liked the first page. Could Garb, could you do the honors of leading the all right. The, the uh, first page the, to the leader. To the leader. Ah, okay. That one. Stand by. By the morning star, by your free and conscious choice to open this book, by the power of these words as leap from the page and manifest in your mind, by the power of the sigil inscribed upon this page, your soul I claim the nature of Belial, god of this world, ruler of demons, and immortal corruptor. Your psyche, from this point forward, is an insignificant haunted thing with eyes fixed on the ground for salvation lies eternally beyond your grasp. It's a bit heavy. Until (laughs) such time as I verbally release you from your debt or you pass bodily through this grimoire's final gate, your prayers for salvation shall fall upon deaf ears. In shall an untimely end you meet before we complete our quest, you forfeit... Your forfeit soul shall contemplate infinity and unending agony and humiliation perpetrated by leering demons most foul with boiling oil and unspeakable implements. Could you imagine, like, dying and having your soul go to a cowboy? Like, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Garbro's got me now. Shit. No, no. So- no Garbro's trying to turn me into a fanboy. No. He's going to make me put on the caviars in the maid uniform. Shit. <laughs> So, brother and sister, I welcome you to the knowing ranks of the damned. We are at war. Our lord and brother, Beelzebub, needs soldiers. The armies of heaven return to save their father, Agla, Adonai, Jehovah, and steal all that we have built. Jesus, I'm getting flashbacks to Baptist church. Yeah. The first of his plagues have arrived. A flood, a flood unlike the world hath ever seen. 
rather than the briny waters bested by Noah's infernal ingenuity. I thought you might get it. The false father deluges the whole of the earth in a vast ocean of information in a murderous bid to drown the minds of all men. What once were streets and avenues and hanging gardens and museums are now submerged, equally lightless and un under undifferentiated in form and choked with seaweed. The bloated corpses of philosophers, artists, priests, and kings float towards the horizon, a cruel reminder of the sweet ancient wisdom that has turned into dust in our mouths. Those scholars who scaled the highest towers now languish on the rooftops drag thorns across their flesh and welcome oblivion with open arms while Montes grins. And here you arrive two minutes from midnight of the western mind. Two strokes of your paddle will bring you alongside the parapet where our wretched father lies in hospice. Never a vile or tyrant has lived. Pity you this creature of sagging flesh, trembling limb, and doddering intellect. I, I always think of like fucking uh... Remember this passage? You, I always envision fucking Nurgle, dude. Yeah. The flaking yellow fingernails and the swollen rheumatoid joints of these hands have brandished iron, cracked whips, and measured chain. These spittle-flecked lips have condemned countless souls to torture and death. This shriveled pizzle... B- <laughs> this sh- shriveled pizzle? <sighs> Pizzle's a term for pee-pee. <laughs> this shriveled pizzle... Bowed a billion wounds unwilling. <laughs> it's turning into James Joyce's like, fucking Eurus. Like I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't laugh, but goddamn, this shriveled pizzle bowed a billion wounds unwilling. It seems that God is not dead after all, but slowly rotting away in an infirmary. For those of us above the high water, now is the time to snuff his ignoble candle. It gives hardcore 40k vibes. I think yeah. it's elaborate. I, I mean, like you know, the thing is, but to give you guys an idea, the the thing is, the entire book is kind of written in this style. You know what I mean? So, as I say, it's not ideal if you just want to, like, you know, quickly look something up. But it does give the book its soul, even if it is a. Um, dirty soul. I don't know. <laughs> a tarnished one. A, uh, a, a tar and twisted yeah. uh, existence. Yeah. Although it's really interesting. I really like because um, I love. I love the way I love Yob's like four worlds and his whole like. Talk. I don't want to see the thing is. I, I was talking to him and he said, "No, you can pretty much show whatever you want, but I don't want to show everything because you know." You know what I mean? guys you don't want to spoil the. You don't want to spoil the surprise on the page where a dude is branding a demon. Dick <laughs> yeah, right dick. yeah, exactly. Now, I will say the artwork in the book is yeah. beautiful to like, say the least. Like, 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 chat. Like, mark down somewhere the best pictures on page forty-seven, where this dude with like this lunging grimace is searing the mushroom tip of a demon <laughs> with a fucking brand and it's by far my favorite fucking image yeah. well the, I, th- I think that it looks more like you know like the water um, the f- demon from the depths what do you call that one you know the water this, one this priest seared my pizzle please help <laughs> please honestly it's fucking great the, the artwork really does do any of you guys know Robert Crumb at all well, it reminds you of, like, Rogue Trader shit, almost. Yeah, it's in the same vein, almost, you know? But uh, Robert Crumb was, uh, he's pretty much a fucking loser. Pure, def- like, when, <clears throat> when you think, like, genuine beta, beta meal on Ironic, like, there's no better word to describe the but Robert Crumb. Like, I mean, he's like a wee, gimpy, sort of, he's got, like, you know, the snivelly voice and all that, and he's... I, like he stinks of the tism, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and uh, well, don't hold back, James. Do you yeah, know? Like, no, but, really? Well, well, Whoa! Well, no, it's all right. Robert, Robert would have would approve of this. Honestly, I'm not even joking. <laughs> uh, but no, Robert, he's a, and it's in that art style that was um, he turned into like a sex symbol in the sixties, and it's very what? It's very sexual. Think... His art, to say the least. You would need to see it. It's very like. Um, what would be the right word, like femdom maybe, or like, um, you know, it's all about big women, and like we can be fellas with massive cocks, it's really bizarre, really weird stuff, but it is in the same sort of pulp, 
would that be like a very pulpy artwork? I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's definitely good. underground for sure. <clears throat> I, th- I think it looks cool anyway. I like the look of it. And it definitely does add to the book. So it does. I think it's very, it, very it, nice. It, it, it definitely adds something, I'll tell you that. Well, it, 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 if, if there's one thing you can do, you can just open it. It's definitely something you could have on like a. I mean, like you coffee people. It's definitely a. <laughs> it's definitely... If, if you want a conversation starter, put this bitch in the coffee table. <laughs> yeah. Wait. yeah, pretty much. So, so uh, what's your? You guys are about? laughing, but but reading this thing over, I would bet you that the people on, uh, 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 uh spot not Spotify, but all the Twitch streamers, looking over the hor- horoscope, would love to to no, throw out no, auguries. No, no, would no. love to do some of these divination stuff in this book tells you how to do it <laughs> yeah. all right it, it, it um, tells you how to throw bones and interpret which way your <laughs> fates are going which what the history of the cards and what they're meaning and how they relate back to like the original egyptians or romans well, he, throwing he, he these dice a lot of research into yeah, it yeah right? he he's does. Not, like he, he's not just waffling he actually went in and did a lot of, like there's, there's there's some elements that i knew of where i know better to go in there and touch it and he's like just openly researching that <laughs> yeah. shit i was like Man, this man got big old testicles. <laughs> I mean, so th- th- what I would say is, like, you need to ask yourself a few questions. Are you interested in the occult? Are you a Wiccan? Are you a 90s golf? Do you want to make your prayers cry? Do you want to make your DM cry? Do you want to... Uh, do, you, do you just... Are, are you a bit of a pervert? You know what I mean? Do you drink uh, IPA? Yeah. You know, do, do, are you mentally deficient in some way? You know, if you answer <laughs> yes to any of them, you're going to love this book. You know what I mean? Do you <laughs> love Christian lore? This is yeah. the book for you. <laughs> you know, it is uh, it is it is really interesting. And the worst... That, so the problem is... So the guy sent me this book to review it of sorts. And I've only actually been able to touch the um, first part and a few other bits to it because I actually really want to play the adventure in this and that's why I got Teal because it's like Teal can you please run this game for us please in the future oh. <laughs> you know I, mean? I, I, I more or less thumbed through the entire book and it was a foot like I was reading it I got up turned my lights on click and went back to reading it because I, I was like I'll, it was like 8 o'clock at night I was waiting for a thing to finished downloading. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll poke through this PDF. And I like was reading it. I turn on my lights on. Click, 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 click. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hmm. <laughs> I when yeah. I when I when I was reading it, I went into fugue states multiple times, and I flung my <laughs> phone across <laughs> the room <laughs> just to like stop, just to oh. stop whatever was going on. <laughs> because you it's know, like you're breaking multiple seals you, as you, you read through the chapters. <laughs> like you know what gets me though. You know what gets me is it, when people watch this video, they're going to think we're taking the piss. They, they're going to think, "Oh, you're you're really overreacting. It <laughs> can't be that bad." It's like, no, you know, you you've got you've you actually, don't you don't understand. <laughs> this is. Well, uh, <laughs> I think the author the author definitely went to the trouble of writing a book about rituals and then making sure that book itself is a ritual mm, as you read the book. It's literally like, uh, oops, I accidentally summoned a fucking... Dem- I, I summoned Cthulhu in my kitchen to try to make a cake and that kind of shit. We're like, yeah. you're like I'm just, just going to read this book. Like, don't, don't read this book out loud while talking. Just do it mentally, j- j- just in case. You know? All right, I've got, I've got another good one. Do you make them threads on X asking how to summon, summon a succubus? You need this book. And everyone knows that fucking thread that keeps what popping up. Those- no, no. What are those things on slash X? Where like they try and summon a girlfriend or some shit? Yeah, it's so, a, yeah, it's summon in the fucking succubus. It's constant. And, no, and it, or is no, it? No, there's an actual name for it. Where like you try and like give like your anime wife who actual living presence or some shit, and they like like summon it and create it or whatever. Well, I think you could definitely do it with this thing. You know, I, mean, yeah. I, I definitely think it's possible. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I, I think the best part is just um, like not not just the iconography, which is fucking just. I, I'm, I'm sure Teal was like, I don't want to scroll through the PDF no more. Like, just look at page 59 and, and, and just look at that fucking... Uh, that is the liberal agenda right there on page 59. <laughs> 59. You know, I was, you know the best thing is, so to give you guys a better understanding of the author, um, <laughs> he, uh, I was talking to him, and he says he, he tried to buy the, the, the rights of the of the tabletop game Fatal a few years back he offered the guy to did me. he really yeah he tracked him down and he offered him oh yeah this picture <laughs> well, 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 well I will say one thing though this is actually more well written than Fatal actually is it's actually oh, yeah. well structured yeah it is um, no, it, Fate, it, it, 
Fatal is a fucking bad. fever dream on paper. <laughs> yeah, Fatal's just bad. But Job is actually, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. Is it Job or Job? I'm Job. Sure. Job, yeah. Job. <clears throat> but I'm... <laughs> He, I was talking to him and he says he's a gl- he gl- he genuinely does want to write uh, an unofficial third edition of Fetal. And I think he could actually pull it off and do it I, with fun. I think he could with a bit more, like, kind of rein it, like, rein it a little bit on all the charts, but he probably could, yeah. But I, but Fatal in itself is kind of distasteful. Yeah, it I mean, is. This, is. this is creepy, but it's it's kind of all, all, all in thing, if it makes any sense. Mm, no, so, so what uh, what section shall we, shall we first discuss of this Grim <clears throat> War? Okay, so we've done part one. Um, I really haven't touched the adventure because, as I say, I feel bad because... The thing is, the book came in, and I was like, okay, what is this all about? And then I started looking at it, I was like, what the actual fuck is this? So I read through the whole part one, I was like, oh, mate, this is actually, this got my this got my edgy heart tingling, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, mate, this is perfect. And I really, I really want to play, like, an all, like, an all witch Desire party. Desire to shit post and Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I was looking at the monsters and all in the back, I was like, what the fuck? Oh, no, I gotta play this, I gotta play this. So uh, I feel bad because I've been sent this to the V, but it's like, sorry, man, I actually really want to play it. So maybe that's like a compliment um, in some weird way. I, I will form. admit that the best part are, are the monsters, but we'll get there in time, I'm sure. All right. Uh, do you want to go for the uh, OV then of the <clears throat> characters? So, uh, well, well, no, no. Most, it's, 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 we'll, we'll get there. We're, we're at part two. That's the, that's the adventure primer. Yeah. All right. Let's go down. Using this adventure. So, so yeah. more or less, you, the adventure starts in 1930, or sorry, 1631. Uh, in like uh, Germany or yeah, it's set, somewhere. <clears throat> I think it's said just so, after so, Thirty Years War. So it is, which yeah. uh, the Thirty Years War is the I would argue the most destructive war in Europe. Well, probably, uh, well it's until... funny. It's funny because they're, they're they're kind of using the whole like because Germany in itself is creepy in its in its history, and they're kind of layering on that a bit harder. And uh, oh, here here it is. So after the events of Better Than Any Men, Star. The star of Gustavus Adolphus, the second king of Sweden, last champion of the Protestants and line of the North, has rocketed into an unstoppable trajectory through the war is far from over, although the war is far from over. So more or less you're in Sweden-occupied Germany as this fucking thing kicks off. Mm. Which, of course, like, you know, Protestants, they're, they're all going to burn in hell, you know, so <laughs> you, you've already we, summoned I, demons. <laughs> That didn't take long. <laughs> yeah, well, what do you expect from me, for God's sake? You know what I mean? Stairs Irish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, you know, this part of history is actually really fascinating, but it's not really talked about all that much. Like, the Anabaptists and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a... So, of course, everyone knows about the Protestant Reformations, but there was... So there's Protestants, and then there's the even further Protestants, like the hyper heretic Protestants that even the Protestants don't even like, which were Anabaptists, and pretty much the whole thing came down to um, their idea of the world was the reason why everything's so bad is because um, people don't get a choice on their baptism or not. People are just born and they're expected to be good Christians. They're not. And making the choice to become good Christians, which, which I just want to sin, okay? That's all I want to do. <laughs> but, like, you know, that makes perfect sense. But to people back then, that was like super highly heretical, you know what I mean? And mm. uh, there was, there's a really mad story in Munich, so there is. And, like, you know, the well, guy. Well, actually, we should point out that he did a lot of, like, history research through this book, too. Mm. Like, you get, you can get, you kind of, he, he gets, he goes a bit, uh, a bit off, off, off tone a few times on purpose because history is relatively boring. Yeah. But he, but you, yeah, you can tell where he cross references back and forth to natural history and, and what he's created. So mm. that's pretty cool in some regard. Um, and then he talks about the region of Hanau. Uh, Hanau. Hanau. I can never say it. <laughs> It's uh, it's by Frankfurt. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, let's go down to page seventy four. Yeah, there it is. There's like Frankfurt, Hanau, Assenheim, Hungen, uh, Mutzenberg. This is not. It's it's kind of made up, but kind of not made up. Yeah, it's somewhere in between. Um, I did mm. read some, but not much. You know what I mean? And the way, like, I think the way he's, I find a lot of dungeon, like, you know, not dungeon, sorry, but campaign books are very little loot ask. But I feel like. Like what he's done here is he's even said it's like look I've just kind of like give you guys the setting and I'm going to describe all the places um, but really he's aiming for you to be playing a more sandbox 
sandbox-esque game. You know, that's what he wants to achieve. You know, film it all. He wants to to kind of give the... How to make your players kill children. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that page. Oh, we can't... We can't... We can't can't skip that one. Yeah, we got... Okay, go on. Do you want to go for it? Okay. You lead out that page. I'll go for it. So, page 83. How to make your players kill children. Human beings are predictable creatures. When first confronted with the prospect of committing infanticide or other acts of violence against children, your players may balk at violating us all to human taboo. Even if your gaming group is inured to atrocity through their own callousness and casual brutality, you may notice that the players go through several mental stages. From reluctance to assistance, <laughs> it is your solo role as referee to march them to the edge of this moral precipice and dehumanize the spawn of Lucifer until your play f- <laughs> players briefly <clears throat> dive over the edge. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, I think uh, the guy's great. I, I, I love this shit. I think, like, you know, okay, well, uh, who, 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 who can we add to the list? Do you want to add, um, oh, do you want to oh, be murder oh, hobos? So the so yet still some may be reluctant to participate in attacks on these mockeries of innocence or bar others from doing so. These are the souls who beg to be tested, and you will find it a great delicacy to to extending their moral agony. When a player is convinced the corrupted youth are irredeemable, you must play up the child's innocence by crying and pleading for mercy. Oh God! When a player is persuaded of the youth's chance of salvation, tear down the conviction by having the demon spawn perform a natural act, such as vomiting blood, wriggling with maggots, or offering sexual favors. Oh. Thus and so shall you draw out the group's eventual condemnation for man's greatest weakness and his need for social acceptance. You are witnessing the thrashings of a group of belief being born. Demonic children must be killed. Or just children who scream in the fucking grocery store. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> your job is to alternate at stopping the flu and pumping the bellows to extend attention. There are essentially two minds at play. Those that are most influenced by their peers and those most influenced by authority. In the former case, we can only convince a few members of the group, and they will encourage their peers to fall in line. So, me and James in any party <laughs> are are they Protestant potatoes? Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> for the in, for the incalcent ladder, you may need to introduce a moral or bureaucratic authority into the story, such as the Archbishop, Count, or Burgermeister, to officially sanction the slaughter. Once, ooh, ah, that's interesting. That is interesting. So he was saying is as if an authority says yes, kill those kids, it may alleviate the guilt of your player. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, it's like pi- like Punctious Pilot, right? Washing yeah. his hands of it because it's someone else's yeah. decision. Yeah. Almost Once there. the group has accepted the belief it perpetuates itself, that mm-hmm. all inhuman monsters should be destroyed is self evident. However, there are still ample opportunities for psychic ma- for psychic em- em- manipulation. Introduce normal children into the story for an eerie situation. For example, a pair of toddlers lost in the woods. Gauge the group's reaction and then conjure up another dilemma in which to test their casual, their consensual hallucination. <laughs> so, do you want to play an evil campaign? Because that's like you know, this is this is this is the perfect primer. Do you want to play an evil game? Because this is this is going to be like you, you need to remember, I guys. Mean, Garbo well, wanted to make an evil game playing the fucking yeah. all skeleton party, and that did not turn into an evil game at all. It didn't. You know, they, they fucking went like they went rogue on the fucking concept. And I mean, even if you guys don't want to use the book to play, the book give you some pretty good fucking ideas. Yeah, you know, I'm really, like, this is the thing. This is the thing. So this book is something that I would never have bought. Like, I would never have bought if it wasn't sent to me. You know what I mean? But now it's been sent to me. I was like, I would definitely buy this. If that makes any weird sense, it's just not something that I would be like. Yeah, it sounds interesting, but like, I'm not really into supplements for the most part, and it's a system that I don't play. So you know, yeah, it's I'm, I'm probably never gonna touch it. But I do think it's still valuable, you know what I mean? I do think it's got um, potential for a lot of people, you know, even if it's oh, not sure. something that you'd be intent... It's either... I, I, I really do buy into it's either going to be a love-hate sort of purchase. Like, you know, it's something that people are either going to really be into or they're really going to hate, or people are just going to buy for the absolute oddity of it all. 
Well, it, it is unique and just simply what it is. Like in, in terms of w- w- what this book is, is it is unique in the same way Fatal's unique. But <laughs> unlike, but, but, but unlike Fatal, this isn't like a schizophrenic rant and fucking unreality. It's it's simply, it's really a something else. Um, I, I, I can say with certainty that it's definitely a unique book that's not just fucking useless or measure for girth, you know? Yeah, yeah. So if you can't get through the first, like, the, the forward to the reader, um, it's going to be a hard time. You're going to have a hard time getting through the rest of the books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just um, don't you're going to have a hard time. time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you might and, literally have a hard time. I don't know. Right, but but after if you if you go and 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 read over to the parts that are interesting that are full of history about history about Dungeon Dragons, history about the dice you use, about even like Roman soldiers and Egyptian guards you rolling d twenties is 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 amazing. And then the the choice of the symbol of each shape of dice is important, and the color and trying to invoke the color of your dice to achieve the outcome that you want in the roll of the dice. It's 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 all interesting it uh, play of it numbers. Really like like when you read Fatal, Fatal is you read because it it's just so macabre and morbid. Like you're like who the hell would write this? I don't know. I well, I, I, I just went for it just for the pure meme of it. Just because yeah. people wouldn't stop talking about it. I got like, I got to check this out for myself. Well, but the, but the thing is, this is this is better constructed. It's it's, it's simply it's it's got actual history stuff in it and it's actually more fun to read it's gonna scare the shit out of your grandma don't show don't show don't show gram gram the satanist book but it's it's, it is fun to read and simply just the fact that he put he put a lot of work into this yeah he has i i think honestly though see if this but this book would never have been able to be made like well like even 20 years ago you know what i mean um this this would have justified the satanic panic 100 percent if 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 this was if this was the thing and he even talks about it though in as we what would you call his whenever he like he's describing like you know it's more of like his world view almost mixed with D and D I don't know or not D and D you know what I mean role playing games in general his personal beliefs and all yeah that. yeah it's it's actually is a really interesting read you know um it's something that you don't really come across all that often in a lot of books like yeah you do get like you know some pointers on like oh well, actually, I, f- I feel uh, like that's how you, you should dm and all that in, in the book the, the the jews got fucking style though look at that hat dude yeah, yeah. he fucking does uh, the, the, I, the jew the, the, the jew is kind of pimping not gonna lie he gives yeah. great rates also you know what I mean? he's giving you better rates than if yeah. you're gonna go to town and you're gonna just try to exchange your foreign money for for whatever goods you hope to get yeah. if the store uh keeper even accepts your your weird uh, ruble or whatever, but it, it seems it seems to be like the G is definitely one of the good ones. But I again, I haven't read that ahead because I've got a funny feeling everyone's going to end up being evil in this. You know, um, just the dwarf is really funny looking though. I have to yeah. say, I, I love I love this wee dwarf. I love his little bits and whatnot because he literally is like an actual dwarf, like a realistic dwarf, not like a not like a fantasy like dwarf. A... Yeah, like like a bearded mining dwarf. This is like a literal like like court dwarf. Yeah, you know? yeah. But uh, there's a chapter called the the the, uh, the residence overview, which is rather interesting. If you, if you want, I'll read it. It's up to you. It's for theme, right? Uh, there's yeah, a the lot theme. of good theme in there. Yeah, do you wanna yeah. do you wanna go for it? Holy yeah. Jump so on. on the residence overview, it, number one, it shows, it shows, the picture is a big Satan bull thing puking on a brain that's a centipede body, which is fucking fantastic. Um, it says most adventurers follow a fairly basic formula. It starts with a short history followed by a number of maps with key lists of locations. There may even be a couple of handouts or an appendix of new monsters. If this is the sort of product you are looking for, I suggest you put this book back on the shelf. And that's a funny it's 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 cool how he says that. Like this is not mm. the book for you, bud. Yeah. There is no, there is no shortage of printed products of this sort written by toy company executives masquerading as tabletop game designers. You know the ones. I mean, the sad vampires, bankrupt of ideas that repackage the plot lines from <laughs> 40-year-old adventures written by truly original game designers with unique voices, which he write though. <laughs> yeah. It's you, see this is what I really appreciate about this book though. As you can see, this is something that 
you could he could never do this on Kickstarter. You know what oh, I mean? No, no way. This is not something um, that you could. Well, uh, well, he's stuck in the same hole I am. Where he, like me and him, ain't no one gonna publish our shit. Yeah, you got to do it yourself. But it was. Well, yeah, no, yeah. To be fair, he's doing this with the flame of what do you call it? But they're the weird. They're they're like a Renaissance, uh, old school mo- movement. So they are. They've actually got some really interesting books. I've been looking on their websites. So I have. And, That's uh, interesting because it, it did remind me of reading like the uh, the 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 SGA the Society for Creative Anachronisms. They have yeah, like the, yeah, the known yeah. world book, mm-hmm. and this had a lot of feelings to reading through this book. Brought me back to that known world of the, of the Society <laughs> I, for Creative Anachronisms. So I, I, lo- I, say, I love how the side practice just fucking just throw shade on on modern two different views. So <laughs> well, it says. Uh, you can tell after they are done. Excuse me, after they are done hammering the text down to an eighth grade reading level and passing it through a marketing focus group, the adventurer's bloodless corpse is painted up like a two penny whore with a soulless digital artwork. <laughs> Close the book now and be careful if the cover does not hit your ass on the way out. <laughs> I love it. Two penny whore with its soulless digital artwork. <laughs> you can you can see the um, you can you can tell the type of fella that's created this so you you know that's what i yeah. love about it you can really see you know well common the thing is you know comparing comparing this to, comparing this to like 5e or this like, is not even new, i mean well, yeah. well what i'm saying is that he, he's not he's not wrong though like what, what was the last the last um 5e like 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 the the Strix Haven College thing like uh, he's not wrong. I yeah. to be fair, I haven't even looked at that. Be honest with you, and they, they, they're like repackaging old adventures like like, like Ravenhole, <laughs> you know. And it was it was just supposed to yeah that book was just supposed to capitalize on pop culture wizardry yeah. going so, to wizard school yeah, yeah. That, that that Strix Haven and like. It's literally that shit where like they repackage this thing and like beat down the reading level. Like here you go, idiots. Here's a book for you to read and make us and make us money for. Okay, here here's another one. It, here's another group of people that would enjoy this. Did you enjoy Tim of Horrors? If you did enjoy Tim of Horrors, you will enjoy this. If you did not like Tim of Horrors, <laughs> you will not enjoy this. And there you go. That's that for any five E players. That's that's just going to be your baseline. You know what I mean? That's the I mean, easiest. That's the easiest way to say. Is this a book for you? He makes it quite clear who he's marketing towards. Like, if, mm. if, if you're the basic bitch D and D five E user, you're not going to like this book. Yeah. Well, you know, I was talking to my wee cousin, so I was right. So he's a bit of a zoomer, right? And uh, he got into he got into role playing games from uh, Critical Role. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, Critical Role. Yeah, I know, I know. But I just, uh, I, I just did a fucking video with that shit today, dude. Yeah. Mario. I'm, I'm, I'm still mad about it. I'm still fucking mad about no. it. No, um, to be fair, like, I did a video talking about Critical Role like two weeks ago and honestly I don't really have much of an opinion on them it's more just disgusting <laughs> yeah um, so on but, page 101 is that lion and Godzilla thing 69ing I think they're 69. eating each other's they're eating each other's bellies it's like a it's like a bell you know where you just like uh vibrate your lips to make that noise on someone's belly. You know, I, mean, that's I, I don't think other. they're doing a 69 raspberry situation here. Yeah, that's I mean, what it is. What? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll accept that. that, uh, the, that then guard, what's all the jam? What's all the jam that's coming out of them? <laughs> they just ate uh, English muffins for breakfast and it's just, you know, things happen. Can I? I guess. Oh, so, I don't know. so there's one thing I want to just point out before we go any further and it's probably my favorite part of this book. Well, actually, it's probably my second favorite part of this book, and it was a thingy that pointed out to me. It was a flea man or not that uh, mm-hmm. pointed this bit out. Let me just find it here. But if you go to the end, if you go to the stat blocks, there's literally just a stat block for poor people. <laughs> I, 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 I love the way it's the poor. The purr. <laughs> but literally, everyone's fucking poor here, so you know. Eh, you know, um, but, uh, but I like how uh, starting on page, um, I think one hundred three and going down, it kind of gives you ideas for like how to how to get the party involved in the storyline. Mm. Like city life is a fucking spider monkey. Then there's like the uh, the the uh, the Judengasse. So it's like you're like like in, in like the, the the Jewish portion of the city and got all these things. So he actually gives you good ideas for it. This is basically a module. I mean. Yeah, it is. It's, it's just different. You know what I mean? It's just, it's formatted uh, differently. It's... Oh my god. Have you seen the exorcism panel? Go to page 107. I just. 107? Right, one second. Oh my lord. 106, 107. 
So the girl rips her bedclothes open, suggestively strokes her body, and begs an adventurer to suck her pizzle. <laughs> her pizzle? <Woo>! Wait, what? <laughs> Hold well, on. It, it don't say her pizzle. It says something else. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. a chicken. That's yeah. a chicken. He's right. asking about a chicken, suck, I think. Suck my rooster adventurer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, got to you. Honestly, this, uh, you know, again, again, this, this, uh, this, there's going to be a lot of people, like, see if you're playing with, like, Landomers. Like, if this oh. is, like, some. If Could you imagine springing this campaign on on four fucking innocent souls? Like, y'all want to go on a D and D adventure, you motherfuckers? <laughs> you, you could not take this to like a game store and just pull it out and be like, "Hey guys, do you want to play this?" You know, that's, no. you, this, this is definitely not a book to whip out in a game store. You're yeah, no. kick that one. <laughs> if any, in any any Karens with their kids w- looking at Pokemon cards see you open this book and look at any of these pictures, they'll be like, "Get away from my children." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Like, Jesus I, Christ! I, uh, but I, I, I do really appreciate it, and I just can't help. And again, I, I really feel bad because he sent the suspect to like advertise, like you know, to show up. And you know, I forgot to actually say he's not, he's not giving us any money or anything. Like this is not. Well, well, the thing is, like, as, as, as we're all laughing, but it's not a bad book. I, 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 I really like it. I honestly do because I, je- I, I just don't think there's I'm, anything well, else well, like this. There's there's imagery where, like, on page 116, there, there's a person with a vomiting ass person yeah. on the budget. Like, this is just... It's such a great conversation starter. Put this, put, put this on a random page on a coffee table and see what someone says. Like, does that say... You know, what? what I, I mean, I mean, it's, but the thing <laughs> is, it's not all like that, though. Like, you know, there is certain bits, but see the oh, see the Archangel I, 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 Michael. I really like, I really like yeah. this one. I, well, I really actually, think it's it says cool. it says that he's African. He's he's African in that passage. Yeah. So Michael's a giant muscle black dude smiting demons. And uh, you see, <laughs> the, well, the, smiting the, anyone that that summons him with this book. Yeah. yeah. True. Fruit. Don't uh, don't don't summon Michael. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so so literally, you summon Michael. You summon Michael. And if you're bad, you're gonna get blacked. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah, something like that. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, all all the monsters, though. I I. You know the thing is, even if you aren't interested in the campaign book or you're not interested in the occult or anything like that, I even think the the monsters in this are great. Like I can't. I don't. <laughs> I don't know how much I can talk. Okay, you know what? I already talked about the sodomy on another video. I suppose I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but but, but I, w- I will say though to to the, to the author who wrote this, the Black Abbey is my favorite fucking thing in in this book. Uh, what well, page is that on? Let me, let me go uh, to it. Look on page one seventeen. This is such mm-hmm. a great horror setting for any campaign. Like, you can reflavor the text if you want to, but the Black Abbey is a great way to start out like a horror adventure because mm. great great ideas um i mean there, there are sodomy nuns yeah in the black abbey but but it's just it's such a this, this, this is great for a 40k adventure um, oh yeah it actually would dv5e yeah. i mean the black abbey is my favorite because of the giant crustaceans in the, in the oh, i love i love the hell crab yeah, that's the one of my favorite crab, monsters. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there's like devil shrimp trying to run down these two villagers, and fuck it, I love it to death. Like, I know some of them go, this book's an abomination, Teal. But <laughs> I, I find it hilarious, dude. Like, th- th- this is like, like, I, I'm sure James knows, but I used to go ghost hunting, like, for real, like, semi professionally. And I think this is just a, a, a fucking delight of a book. Mm. <laughs> There's some things where you're like, I want to turn the lights on. But other times you're just kind of like, this is really fun to read. Yeah. I, I it, You know, it's just different. It's, uh, and, but it's more than just different. That I, I have never came across anything like it before in my life. No. And I, again, it's something that if if, if I saw it at, uh, at a game store or whatever, if I saw the book, I don't think I would have bought it. I, I really don't think I would have picked it up. I wouldn't have thought twice about it. But because the guy sent it to me, I actually, you know, I got the chance to even find out about it. I'm, I actually really like it. Like, unironically, really, yeah. really enjoy this. So the only oh. book or supplement that would come close to it, I feel, is the, uh, what, Book of Vile Darkness, right? And that's like, that's like the light version. That's like the demo version of this deep dive into the occult and rituals that this book is. Mm. You know, it's... 
crazy so, where yeah but uh, i mean it's just i'm sure the more white hearted and the pure of the game would be like this is, i i couldn't sleep when i read this I mean, there'll be there'll be a lot of people that'll look at this and just light it off as like smelt or it's just there'll be a lot of people that'll say this is being disgusting for the sake of being disgusting you know what no, I mean? no that that's fatal yeah, I suppose. That. But I do think there will be people that'll say that about this as well. And to be fair, they're well, not well, long. When, when there's a demon I'll, crawling I'll out of a nun's this. asshole, it's, it's bad. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll, like, I'll this. Fatal is fatal is like the poor college kid wearing a sl- this. This is basically wearing a tie and is, is a more proper fatal. You know, this fatal's got a job. It has you <laughs> know has a four hundred one k. This is a more proper fatal. Yeah. Or not, not not more proper fatal, but more proper edgy. Uh, module book really mm. like fatal as a module book as edgy had like a pair of like stained like khaki cargo pants and crocs this has like a tie it has a 401k it has a savings account you know it goes vacation this is a more proper horror edgy module mm. but the monsters are, are the are the best part like like the black abbots those can go into fucking anything dude I feel, anything I, he did put in soldiers and whatnot, but it's, it feels like it's almost like yeah, I get it. He kind of had to put them in, but I kind of feel yeah. like mate, you wasted pages. You should you should have put in more more shit about the witches, or you should have done more demons, or you know what I mean. I feel like mm-hmm. um, like even just putting in the purr, like yeah, I get you have to put it in. You know what I mean? You're going to be fighting some power people. Oh, oh but uh, uh, let me explain, uh, Michael. So actually. I don't. My, my Michael's fucking hung as shit for one. That's, that's a long shadow he's casting on yeah. that. But uh, whenever a portal to heaven is opened with the book of Antibesis, Erzangel Michael storms through, accompanied by a host of righteous angels and blaring heavenly trumpets. The archangel appears as an unclothed African warrior with rippling muscular musculature and alabaster swan wings. Michael's only weapon is a spear with which he smites the nearest. If there are no demons present, the holy warrior attacks the closest creature aligned to chaos, including the player characters. Mm. I think but, it's uh, cool. Yeah. But so Michael is a fucking muscly black dude come to smite Whitey, and I fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Yeah, that be black dot com, pretty much. Hey, Hey, yo, where the demons at? Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I I think I don't I don't I, you see this is a problem. I don't know how to get across. Just because I feel like whenever I feel, I feel like I'm talking about this, and I feel like you know, I feel like a lot of things I'm saying, you, 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 you really need to see it for yourself. You know what you I mean? Really do. Yeah, right. it, this is nothing. Nothing I've ever came across, and I'm very happy. If to have been if you want to aim, if you want to own one edgy book that's not absolute dog shit, this is kind of the one to get. Yeah. Like, yeah. At the very least, it's a good uh, conversation starter. I think it's if you want if you want a gift for for your D and D friends to scare the shit out of them, buy them this book. Is a oh. gift. I got you a module for you to try out. Yeah, unironically, <laughs> unironically. Uh, also, some of the other good things I like to point out is so when you buy the hardback of this book, you also get the PDF copy of it, which is something that yeah. every fucking game should do because like everyone plays games online these days. <laughs> And I'm sick of buying games on. I'm sick of buying books on Roll Twenty, and also buying them like yeah. the hardback version. Why am I paying full price for fucking Roll Twenty? You know what I mean? This is absolute yeah. bullshit. It's it's absolutely uh, so, so so teal. Describe to me what your DM heart feels when you see the hell crabs. Uh, a swarm, obviously, a swarm of them on a ceiling. <laughs> Just falling, Cause, just cause, dropping cause, onto my players. Because they're black chitinous arthropods, and they're armor class fourteen. They move one hundred and twenty feet. <laughs> to be <laughs> fair, to, they to are hauling ass. <laughs> to be fair, though, the the movement's way different than the system, so it is than what we're tend to be used to. You know, so uh, that movement's actually pretty average. It's the same as like an actual human. You know, yeah. I think um, if I compare the stat blocks, you know. And again, like yeah, you know, the stat blocks are actually kind of like you know, like if you're only playing like five E or Pathfinder or whatever, you can very easily convert all of these stats across. You know what I mean? Like you're not putting in uh, much work. Yeah, but my my heart goes out to the hell crab. They are bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, is there anything we've missed? Honestly, is there anything 
We should um, let's touch pick on... out our favorite. Well, let's pick out our, our favorite morbid monsters. Oh, okay. So, like, I've already talked about my one. My one's easily the sodomy nun. I just think the little prim perspective of this is so good that I thought I have to do this myself. Have you ever, like, have you ever watched East Venture? Well, 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 no. You know? So, 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 read the sodomy nun portion. All right. Okay. So, sodomy nuns. Sodomy nuns are unfortunate, corrupted souls forever bound to the Black Abbey for their sins of the flesh. The nun's eyes, mouth. Uh, the nun's, eye, uh, the nun's eyes, mouth, and nose are sewn shut with red thread. When the children of God are near, the blasphemous abominations hike up their habits and walk backwards <laughs> towards the controlled, <laughs> with the controlled face of the devil pointing out their. <laughs> They've got prolapsed assholes, guys, alright? Uh, over their rear ends. <laughs> the devil face speaks through the gaping anus of their host. Their tongues are long. Pre- prehensile and able to grab their foes. Sodomy nuns always travel in even number groups. Uh, D10 plus 2, rounded down to the nearest even number. I think, I, like, you know, look. I don't know what I, to tell I, you guys if that if that doesn't no, if, that, if that doesn't no, say, like we, if you're if you're a DM and you do not want to turn read the special attack read the okay. special attack all right okay so sold me nuns <laughs> armor class fourteen move ninety uh, three hit dice thirteen hit points one anus whip attack for TD four damage or diarrhea spray spray you know what Teal you know Teal can I can I get that on my uh, Skeletor character because I'm planning on doing something like that can I get a can I get a like, spray attack? Would you Would you give me it? Like a necromantle, like a, 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 well, a necromantic well, anal spray. Well, well, can I get it? Like you know the way like Dragonborn have that like uh, breathe fire Breath belly. Weapon. Yeah, yeah. Can I get Can I get anus spray once a day? Uh, Please, <laughs> I'm asking you like nicely, man. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> well, you got to summon. You got to summon something. You probably should send a messenger. You know, summon a right. one up. Send a messenger. All but right. I'll tell you what. After opening this book, I put a salt circle around my house, around my room, <laughs> around myself. All right. Yeah. So, so my favorite are the Nephilim. So. Oh yeah. That's of a good all one. of all the forces raised in the devil's new scheme, no deadlier are the Nephilim. In the times before the great flood, the Watcher angels became so enamored with mortal women they lay with them and bore offspring. Their progeny grew to colossal proportion, outstripped the land's resources, and eventually consumed the residents of the very communities they came from, mothers, fathers, and cousins whole. By some foul design, the devil has harvested the seed of the angels and so desires the Nephilim return. Nephilim gestate and develop at an alarming rate, utterly destroying their host. I mean, it's, it's so edgy, dude. In a matter of months, the young Nephilim grow ten, 10 L's in height. These lumbering giants have oily jet black skin, yellow eyes like saucers, and mismatched fangs that jut from their hideous faces. The towering fiends attack with enormous fists that can topple castle walls. The Nephilim quietly grow their numbers, secreted in dark forests, waiting for the instructions from the evil one. The first time the adventurers encounter the giants, they should face off against a single foe. But the next time they encounter the giants, there will be 1d3 of them, then 1d4, 1d6, 1d8, and so on, until Armageddon. Mm. This reminds me of, like, early, like, like the early edgy D&D monsters, you know? Yeah. Like, it, it, it gets that vibe from them. Like, you, oh, t- like you can tell, like, <laughs> the guy talks about um, D&D in, like, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, and, like, you know, you can really feel that coming across, though. You know what I mean? It's, so, it's, uh, uh, it's reminiscent yeah, for a time yeah. gone by. You know, you so can who's feel this. Gonna read the part- oh. Oh. Who's going who's to read the part about the particular the children? Kennel children. Uh, well, I, oh, teal, James, oh, you oh, do it. Oh, no, teal. Go on, teal. You you got to do it. You know, I I I don't I don't think I can. I can read you about the Hydra, the oh, hy- oh, Hydra. Oh, well, I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't want to spill too much. Okay, we'll only do three, and these would be top picks, definitely. And um, there's other uh, ones. They're honestly, they're all really good across the board. Um, poor gonna... people. <laughs> <laughs> well, the poor people is the, definitely the, the most vile of monsters. The poor. <laughs> no, not the poor's. Not, not the, the poor's. Uh, honestly, so okay, so the pregnant. Can't Children. 
yeah, I'm not going to post the post the picture. Um, the po- the picture is like I think you can post, you can post it on like YouTube or whatever. As well, like it's it's bad, but like I'm just not like it, you know you got to pay the book if you bad. want this. It yeah, it, it, yeah. Okay, so the those unfortunate innocent children who have been taken by the devil are eternally corrupted. The town's missing children have been uh, have been spurted down deep into the forest where their mental p- Fuck me, I'm retarded. Uh, possession is <laughs> <laughs> bodily salvage and repeated by caking devils and demons. Male and female children are like and planted with this stolen seed of angels, which further okay, this is getting really bad. Which further twists their ins- as if it wasn't bad already. I suppose insufficient mortal flames. The children's stomachs well over just a few days. The expendent mothers ca- uh, crave the sweet tea of human flesh driven by the compulsion of their unborn hellish offspring Nephilim uh, who eventually grow into the giant sea above so that's where the Nephilim come from there, yeah. There, yeah, that's that's where they come from uh, this is, this the is one sport. of the times I threw the, my the reading this book across the room <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, was I can't do it I can't do it bro <laughs> yeah I just just man, can we please stop you know this, this is enough for me um <laughs> What what else is there to bring up? Because I, as I say, there is an awful lot in this book, but I really don't like. It is one of those things. Okay, so the problem is the book is a bit on the steeper side. It's forty five euros. I don't know how much it is in dollars. I'm going to assume it's probably more than that in dollars. But you do get probably. the PDF with it. Actually, I'll find a uh, a thing for you. Go ahead. Yeah, but it, so it is a bit on the steeper side, you know. But it's definitely fifty one dollars and thirty seven cents. Eh, what would you say? Is that good or bad for a? Uh, for, for it depends for, on but for, for this book i mean it is on the steep side for sure but it is all completely custom yeah with with original artwork and there's a lot of artwork and there's a lot of 160 art. pages, a lot yeah, 160 of pages. the the average module is about 60 pages so you know you're getting you're getting about two to two and a half modules yeah. in this you worth could of run information probably probably five games that are all different off this fucking book mm, right um, and the quality of the information will allow you to to put details in your other games that you wouldn't have if you if you didn't read this book and things and also cold. damn your soul to hell on yeah. accident not careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the knowledge yeah. well the knowledge has a price yeah. the knowledge <laughs> knowledge comes at a price yeah you're gonna you you, you, you you get the hell. So why are you here? I want to run a D and D game. Oh, so, so, oh, so you're a GM? Yeah, cool. We, we should need one of you for a while. Oh, ah, we've been looking for one. <laughs> you know, um, I do think this is definitely this is not a book for everyone though. There's definitely a lot of people that will not be able to touch this thing with a ten foot pole. You know, uh, but I do think the people that that would be interested in the book are going to love the book. Oh, I know. If you like Attack on Titan, you'll like this book. Uh, yeah, actually, I can see that. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. It's that same kind of edgy, like Attack on Titan. Like, oh, it's religious. Oh, there's giant baby-headed <laughs> eating thing, demon, whatever, you know. Mm. Or if you're a hardcore, like, occult, like, horror movie fan. You oh, like yeah. If you're a horror movie fan, this is de- this yeah. is the thing for you. You know, um, it was actually really interesting though going through all the occult practices because, like, you're like, yeah, I kind of knew bits and pieces, but it was an interesting take, and it's something that you don't normally see. Because I, I went through a big um, Alistair Crowley fees there like a wee while back, um, mm. all about his stuff, and like you know, a lot of his stuff you don't know what's real and what isn't, and you don't know because it's it's all steeped in mysticism almost, even though he's not that long ago. But it's very hard to work out what his actual belief were a lot of the time or what he was actually up to you know and this is actually kind of a nice looking I looking... gotta give the I, I gotta give Yob um, some, some credit for having a passage called how to make your players kill children because yeah. that's like good on you <laughs> well you know you can't put it in the pregnant children uh, monster and not have that like you know I think that's a great uh, introduction you know what I mean it's a great way to just prepare them mentally you know I, th- I feel like that that's what what would be the best way for a DM to say right, I want to play something like this and not everyone's on board would you just send them that page and be like yeah this you, is, is kind of what you're into if, if, you gotta pick out a monster and be like okay 
can you guys kill this and like explain what it is and what it does and show them the picture and be like, all right, can you handle this? Well, would you be Cause... okay with me bending over the table and ripping my arse cheeks apart, like that goatsy picture and uh, <laughs> that demon is crawling out? Or is that a bit much? I don't know, guys. How do you <laughs> feel about sodomy nuns? Just curious. Yeah. You know, you know. Well, I, you, you so, guys... <laughs> so we'll start with t- with Teal. Teal, what is your overall thoughts about the the book? So uh, after I came to from my fugue state, I woke up with uh, uh, pictures of Selma Hayek all around me, a Turkish guy's uh, website on my uh, on my desktop, and my flip flop in my uh, scanner. But the the breadth of information that I got from it, he he has G- Germatria worksheets in this book. He has uh, character sheets that are uh, specialized for his system. That are a simple conversion from five, five uh, e, easily converted over, especially using uh, gematria uh, numbers. You could easily convert the uh, the stats yeah. and stuff. Um, again, I love I love the research and the, just the detail in it. And the more I look at it and reread this book, the more hidden packs and agreements and contracts I find that I've agreed to by reading this book. Yeah, the, There was one thing, I was talking to him and he said to me, uh, I don't want to say because I suppose that's up to for people to find out, I suppose, but he's had he's got a few subliminal hidden messages in this, so he has, he's put in and I don't really want to tell what those hidden messages are, but uh, you know... You'll f- you guys will find out if you pick it up. I suppose it depends. It's, uh, it depends on how much you're into, like you know, hidden meanings and subconscious and you know, psychology and all that type of stuff. It's it is really really interesting. You know? so, sla- slash X would love this fucking book. You know, they well, would. they would, or they would be like burn it in hellfire. Um, I I I hate the Antichrist. Okay, do you unironically <laughs> hate the Antichrist? If you unironically hate the Antichrist, you can't have this book. I'm sorry, guys. You know, <laughs> not allowed. Can't have it. Yeah, this is this is not for you. Not for you. Sorry, Bob boy. I <laughs> I will say one thing though is that if you want a if you want to run a more like down and dirty like if you want to have like a more well let's be fair most D and D games are very high fantasy. They're not very dirty. Not very gritty. Do you want mud kind core? Of like... Are you into mud core? Yeah, because like let's say like because most D and D games they're they're not very. Well, the ones I run are gritty, but not most D D games are are gritty. They're not really they they won't make you feel like ugh. They're, they're very like san like sanitized daycare games. If you want to have a jump start or ideas to run a more nitty gritty horror line game, this book is almost a must have. Just just for the fact that it kind of drags in the mentality. I mean, there's a how <laughs> there's like a passage on how to make your players kill children. I mean. If you want, like, if you want ideas to glean off of, I mean, like for like his little town sections, he has tables of like, like, like the, like the, the, uh, like the, the, like, well, how, how do you explain it? Um, well, Pete, kind of like I'll throw it up well, on screen. Sure, I can throw because I don't want to put too much out there. You know what I mean? Cause... Well, hold on, I'll, I'll find a page where they start and I'll uh, scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. Um, scrolly, page scrolly. Seven, seven, three. I'm a brainlet. Yeah, so like, like page 103. These look like like city life. It, it gives you all the hooks you can use to get the party going. And he has tons of these. He's got ones for the city, ones for like racial areas, one for like ghettos. You got exorcism ones. You've got like persecution ones. Like the town's a buzz with fresh tragedy. The apothecary's daughter disappeared the last night. This devil tree is surely the work of sorcerers, necromancers, or witches. It kind of gets your party launched on, on, onto these these more or less plot hooks. Mm. And because because I don't know if you two, I don't know if Teal or James has ran or played in any horror games. It's actually really fun if you have the right people. There's nothing better than, than <laughs> so me. I'm not a yeah, yeah. not a guy. There's, <laughs> there's, there's nothing more fun than making your players squirm in like discomfort as you're explaining how like this thing is moving or how this thing is crawling or how the or how this butcher room looks with with the with the hanging bodies of the town's children mm-hmm. or whatever there's something to to be said for having a game where 
you horrify your players. If you, if you, if you just don't know how to how to do that, this is literally like like that was easy, but and worthy of like a horror game. Like a dead dog is nailed to a tree. Its front legs are spread wide, while its rear legs are pinned close together in a mockery of the crucifixion. Like there's ways to do horror plot hooks that you can use purely or also spin into your own thing. Like there's one called Into the Woods, where basically if you have your 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 your, your players in the woods lost, you can use it to, you can use it to torture your fucking players. Like ghostly moans fill the air as a thick fog rolls through the wood. It, it, it kind of jump starts your your, your 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 lizard brain to make the narrative much more grounded. Mm. It's not it's, 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 it's not as sparkles and rainbows. Oh, you killed the dragon! Yeah, we get to go home now. It's more <laughs> like a there's a giant fucking spider with titties coming at you, and it's, there's you know it's, it's more spur off your horror games because. Yes, we all like to have a nice vanilla game where everyone wins and the bad guy dies, but sometimes you just want to horrify your fucking players, right, Teal? Right, right, yeah. right. That's why uh, there's a sex change room in the uh, Tomb of Horror. Yeah. <laughs> I may I may or may not have profited from that. Um, I cannot talk about that on YouTube, though. That's right, boys. Three <laughs> gold and I'm yours. <laughs> oh. Hey. Uh, anyway. Well, I'm a job for a reason. Yeah. Um, no, for me, I feel like I've already spoken about what I really like about this. I think um, there's a lot of people that will love this book. There's going to be an awful lot of people that are going to hate this book. There's an awful lot of uh, you know, personality, I would say, or psyche ingrained in the book and the whole book is written like a spell book you know what I mean it's very twisty and turny and like, it, like a grimoire yeah. yeah it is it is and he even talks about using the grimoire you know what he actually I was talking to him I so I when I first looked over the book I was looking for it all and I messaged him I was like you know what you've missed out on you should have opened a shop and sold a load of shit like you know see even like you know your wee magic uh, or your musical instruments or maybe like you know some dice he does have a divination kit of little teeth I don't know where he's where he gets the teeth from I'm not making this up yeah. uh, the tooth fairy obviously <laughs> yeah okay you know the tooth fairy is really demonic when you think about it you know children having to make it a bone sacrifice to them it's about a, More bit, of a, less, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one when you think about it but uh no, I, I, I really like this, and I think it's something that I would never have touched if I didn't, like, you know, I wouldn't have known about it otherwise, and I hope I hope there are some people that pick this up just for the oddity alone. This is definitely something that if you're one of those people that just, like, Teal's an excellent example, Teal's a fucking wheel when it comes to RPG books. Are you not? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do. I buy. I buy as many as I can get, or that <laughs> yeah. interest me. If yeah. they have value, if they have value. Yeah, you know, that's the real thing about them. Tail goes for them like there's no tomorrow. And uh, if you're one of those sort of people, if you're interested in any of this sort of stuff, I I would definitely definitely say pick this up. But you you're probably going to get some dirty looks. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is not something you could pull out anywhere. And more than likely, most groups will not be okay with it for the most part. But I definitely think it's something that is worth checking out. And I'll need to ask you, know, though, if... Because at the minute, I know you can just buy... You, if you buy the hardback, you get the PDF. But I don't know if you can just buy the PDF. You know what I mean? Because I'd imagine the PDF is a lot cheaper and a lot more people would be more willing to fork the money out. You know what I mean? Because, as I say, $50 is a bit on the steeper side, even if I do think the price is justified. You know what I mean? So, yeah. One of those ones that's kind of but, personal uh, But you, you also got to give the guy ball, like props for having the balls to send it to you for free. Like, hey, look at this. Like, <laughs> well, like, you know, I was fucking bizarre. You know, it was uh, the way you worded that email to me. I was like, what the f- fuck's this all about? I was like, all right, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, cult. Yeah, that sounds pretty cult. Yeah, sure. Why not? Send us it on over. And uh, I was sitting there <laughs> like, what th- the fuck is <laughs> So I was looking through this and then I like, I tried to find, I tried to search for him online to be like, what, who? Hey, like what? What is this? Is this like, am I, am I, am I, am I being trolled or something like this here? This is really bizarre. So I looked <laughs> the about most all, elaborate troll. <laughs> yeah. So I looked about for him and I find him online and uh, his uh, Twitter handle. So his Twitter is public. So it is. Um, he actually runs a podcast. Him and his mate. Um, it's relatively small though. I don't even know the name. I haven't checked it out. But uh, his Twitter handle is Hentai Daddy. So uh, yeah. 
a man of culture. <laughs> yeah. Dare I, dare I say dangerously based? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, that will come from you, for fuck's sake. Uh, but no, I think that's honestly that's about it. It's a it's a very it's it's a curiosity, to say the least. And uh, I'm very happy that I got a copy of it, and it's actually made me more willing to like you know if I see RPG books that I've never really heard about but if I think it looks interesting I'll pick them up like I actually picked up the Dark Crystal RPG book the other day even though it's something that I know I'm never going to get around to actually playing but I love the Dark Crystal and I'm not really one for just like buying merchandise you know what I mean and I would have thought this is kind of just merchandise but I picked it up and I actually really enjoyed it so I think I'm going to continue with this definitely I think Teal you're going off on me I'm going to become a fucking wheel of uh... <laughs> Megan's been here uh-huh. the whole time. Yeah, the court. I've got no more room in my house. <laughs> yeah, Megan already complains about Jeeves, all your fucking models are in the way. It's like, I'm not that bad. I've only got one shelf of models right at the minute anyway. Yeah. So, but I'll say uh, three out of three artists say it's definitely a good grab. <laughs> yeah, three out of three artists, yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, definitely not for everyone. Is there anything else we should we should cover before we go by the way guys I'm going to chop this up something shocking so it's not going to be this complete thing I'm going to try and I'll just do a big one (laughs) well we'll find out we'll we'll see we'll see you know (laughs) but uh, I I would say that um, the book the book is definitely weird folks it's definitely a weird book but it is a unique book and will help you launch a horror game slash campaign pretty fucking easily you don't have to you have to use the weird pig demons with the giant penises but you can't just use the the like the places in the plot hooks to get your game going it you would know, definitely work in D&D you know Teal you know who would love love this and I mean you could torch them with it uh, Jonathan think the of puzzles yeah. I think you could absolutely torture the guy and you know the thing is Jonathan deserves to be tortured from time to time <laughs> You know, that's the thing. You know what? If there's one player that I know that I feel like, you know, what he should he should probably get he should probably be getting molested by a sodomy nun. It's 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 him. You know, just just put that out there, right? Noted. It's noted. <laughs> so write it down. I got ideas brewing. So if you, so if you want to like add maybe any of this into the spell jammer game, I'd be more than more than okay. I think Cyrus as well should be getting bullied as well. I think Orion should. Uh, I th- I think he would he would enjoy when, it. when he makes a. a female gold dragon to to join my game i i'll, I'll start bullying them I seriously think, yeah i think you could you could definitely pick up a thing or two and you could definitely use it and uh, i think that would apply for most dms honestly see if there's like a player in your group it's like you know what you're you're you're, you're getting the sodomy none all right that's that's <laughs> that's, that's how you're, you're getting the sodomy none <laughs> yeah. i think i think that's where we're, we're, I don't. I don't think we can really top that, can we? Will we? Will we? No, top, not really. Will we, will <laughs> That's we, hard to top. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as I say, guys, links down below. Um, Yoob's got his own podcast, so he does. But as I say, it's not very big. But I'll do. I'll, I'll throw in all his links, and if you want to pick it up, pick it up. Um, I would definitely recommend picking it up because I. I've got issues, you know what I mean. So I'm, I'm, I definitely, I'm down for this shit. <laughs> uh, but as always, guys, hope you guys enjoy, um, and we'll see you next time. Nice. Uh, see you next time. Later. <laughs>